Welcome to Makers Central. Uh, we're at the NEC. I'm on the Triton stand, and I've got a few hours to build a guitar. It's good. I've taken a few shortcuts. It's based on a Crimson kit, and I'm going to stop talking now because uh, the time it has begun. Burn it. Perfect. <laughs> So I've, I've got a part made kit. The difficult bit about guitar building is the neck. Uh, so we've gone and done this at the factory. The frets are done, the neck is carved, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of sawdust flying. If any of you know me, you know that I'm very, very good at planning ahead. All I've got is a neck that's made and a neck pocket that will fit the neck once uh, all of this is gone. Other than that, I just need to design and build a guitar. The typical neck joint is at the 16th fret. So we go there. And I've got a case there that it needs to fit in because we're giving this the guitar away. We're going to have a bunch of makers over the weekend sign the instrument. And, and then we're going to give it away. Other ways I've made it easier is in the hardware choice. So with this bridge, the strings are just going to fit in the bridge. I don't have to drill holes through. I don't have to worry about any of that. And it's going to be pretty awesome. Okay. The dust will start flying soon. So the nice thing is this is a crimson kit, so very, very well made. And I, I'm really struggling to see the center joint. And I've also cheated by having this pre-wired. That's quite nice wiring, isn't it? Now with that sorted, I need to actually start figuring out a guitar shape. All right, so this is gonna be bolt on. I do want a little bit of space here. We are seven minutes into this build. And I've been talking for four of them. The one thing you should never ever skimp on is drill bits. The one thing you should never ever skimp on is Triton tools. If there's ever a time or a place to do something you've never done before, it's when there's a bunch of people watching you live. <laughs> really is. Hmm. That's a bit shark-like, isn't it? This is less stable than my workbench at home, which is already not very stable. No, we're going to go strat-ish. Do we want heavy metal or do we want semi-traditional? I want something comfortable. And this really is the most difficult part of, of this process, is finding something that you like on the fly that isn't totally derivative. So starting out a bit big. 
And I do want to have that as a carve so the top is um, multifaceted, I think. Because I don't have very much time and I like, you know, making my life difficult. I'm going to leave it. This is the only thing I'm not sure of. All right. What do we think? Should we start cutting? Yeah. Okay. Oftentimes at this stage, I'll stand back and I'll, you know, put it on the other side of the room, just go and look, pretend I'm intelligent, drink a cup of coffee. That's mainly so I can drink a cup of coffee. 15 minutes in. I think it was last week where I promised I'd never do a timed build again. <laughs> You've been saying that for a while. I have been saying for a while. With the neck pocket, I could actually do three bolts. The only reason I'm even doing it this big is because I've got a, I've got a plate. So I'm, I'm working within the limitations of what, uh, what I was saying. Now, if it doesn't fit in the case, you just take a hammer to the case. <laughs> All right. At this stage, I'm allowed to start having fun. Because the die is set, it's gonna happen. If I've made a mistake, I've already made it and it's just a case of cutting wood now, which is my happy place. Now normally I use fan saws. One, two, three, four, five. Did it? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, a nice fine blade is good because I don't have any tear out, but I'm also on a bit of a timeline here. No, that's going to take ages. How many of you have built guitars in the past? Oh, ha, ha. There we go. Thanks, man. It's weird. I have a major collection of tools. I love hand tools. I have... It's an addiction. Yet the one I use the most for everything is the Leatherman. There we go. That'll be... That'll do. I love this bit. That's one of the things with Triton. They design the tools so well. Just that action of just taking it and it pops out. You can shoot a hot blade at somebody without burning yourself. It's, uh, it's one of the reasons I love their tools. And I was using them for nearly a decade before I ever became involved.
that's good. All right. I'm using a jigsaw I've never used before, that's never been used before, and started a cut without checking to see if the blade was square, because I'm an idiot. And then I've made the first few cuts and it's not square, and if I make it then square, everything else is weird. So now what we've got is a guitar that's got facets on it that I'm gonna call it a design feature. And it's actually gonna look pretty cool anyway. So, um, we build that into the guitar. The only issue is where I came in from the other side here, but that's gonna need some carving anyway. So this is far too long for this case. So we've got one more cut. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. You don't have to have a huge budget and you know tens of thousands of pounds worth of tools to build a guitar. You can do it with, you know a small workshop that fits in a wardrobe. Ah, I keep tools in a wardrobe. <laughs> okay, templates. One there, one there. I, as a rule, replace double-sided tape with the masking tape and super glue trick. This is something I learned from one of my apprentices at Crimson Guitars a number of years ago. And that has saved me so much time. Make sure you burnish it down, all right? Otherwise, it might not hold. And at this point, I should have... I should have accelerator, and I don't have any accelerator. Okay, so the beautiful thing about the masking tape and super glue trick is that when you're putting sideways pressure, this is incredibly strong. I'm gonna be able to route and it'll be absolutely fine. When I wanna take it away, it comes out with, without that much pressure, as long as you burnish the tape down first. Rule number one, always drill out your pickup cavities before you put the templates on. I just need to check the depth of the pickups I've got. And it's the same thing as with much woodworking. It's not about, hey, this is 14.2 millimeters. It's roughly the depth of two of the heads of my drill bit. And that'll be close enough. but a pillar drill isn't necessary. If you don't have the space, yeah, it's not, it's not required. Okay, now. Now the fun stuff truly begins. I'm gonna route this out with a big cutter that's gonna take away a lot of material, and I'm gonna go with a trim, a trim router. So I'm running the bearing off here, but my pickups have got a very tight radius, so I'm gonna go with a quarter inch cutter that doesn't have a bearing, and just run that off the edge of the template. If you don't stay put, you're not gonna burn things and you'll be fine. So we're 45 minutes in, and only two or three things have gone wrong so far. Now, pre-drilling the cavities is all about saving the router cutters. A drill bit removes it faster with a lot less wear. Okay, you need to tell me who's louder, those guys or the router?
right, so this is brand new, um, not on the market in the UK yet. Uh, I opened the box the other day, looked at it and went, wow! And uh, today's my first time of ever actually playing with it. a hell of a lot. It's got a larger base as well. Okay, so this is going to help. I'm going to direct mount the pickup to the wood and the pickup's going to be about half a centimeter above the guitar, which is exactly what I want. But it comes off very easily. With no detritus. How many of you had normal, uh, normal double-sided tape and you spent three hours rubbing it off with your thumbs? It's, it's soul-destroying. That one task made me question my life choice of being a guitar builder. All right, so this was pre-wired back at the factory and they've kind of done it in a strange shape. That should be on the other side to make it flow with a normal guitar. So I'm having to actually think about something for a change. It sucks. This time I'm going to do what I said I should have done earlier. I'm going to drill before I put the template on. Famag Forstner bits. Flippin' amazing. I would normally do this on a pillar drill with depth stops, being very, very, very careful. Don't forget that I've got a tip there. Um, something I do on, when I'm using a, a Dremel or a small tool like that, is I'll make a flag of masking tape on the shaft of the tool and that blows away all of the dust. This time I'm gonna do the same thing and use that as a depth stop. I'm not only holding the drill with both hands, I'm also resting on here and strengthening myself against the incredibly rickety workbench. That comes in two parts. I want to have masking tape to hold the centerpiece in just like this. And then I'm going to run a, a piece parallel to the edge that I've already drawn on the, on the guitar. It's important that you line up your masking tape properly because you do not want to super glue your template permanently to your guitar. Always, always burnish that down. And also, if you use that blue masking tape, the finer stuff, that's got a shinier surface and that doesn't hold as well as the cheap masking tape. Now, I don't have accelerator, but if you lick the masking tape, it works. So occasionally, obviously, you want to see, you want to know what a piece of wood's going to look like if under finished, don't you? So I walked into the office a couple of months ago. There's a beautiful piece of rosewood or something on on uh, on Tom's desk, who runs Crimson Guitars for me. And I pick the thing up, lick it, and he walks up by me and says, "Oh yeah, I did that this morning as well." <laughs> I've stopped doing that now. Yeah, we've been building now for an hour and eight minutes. 
powered by four cups of coffee so far. This is my favorite thing about the Triton routers. Release the depth stop. That now locks the spindle off. And not only does it lock the spindle off, it locks off the power supply. So that's now hidden. I can't turn this on. I can't blow up the router. Um, nor with other routers, you have to unplug it because this is scary. Okay, so that was by way of me showing you just how quickly you can change the router cutter on a Triton router if you have the right tool. And I'm going for a, a, a deeper uh, cutter here. Now, much like drill bits, a good router cutter will last you a long time and makes life easier. So this one is helicoidal. It sort of goes around a little bit, it cuts smoother. Instead of a blade just going thwack, thwack, thwack into the side of your wood, it's slicing through at smaller intervals. And I've got three blades as well. And uh, it's also quieter because you're not thwacking things. Work holding is incredibly important. I think they will work. Fantastic. Now the middle section of this uh, is held in with just a little bit of masking tape. I should be able to pip that out. There we go. Yeah, I'll be finished in... Uh, All days? Hush your mouth. I can't put you in time out. Uh, no, it won't work. Now, I don't have to, but I'm going to recess the back plate uh, because I have the template here and you know, why not? This is the other thing I love about the Tritons. You've got micro adjustment of depth. An hour and 20 minutes into the build and I've got a hell of a lot of sawdust. We've all used routers, We've all, we all know what that's like. I need to design a, a neck, a headstock. I'm tempted to just leave it like this, actually. Okay, so on the horn, I've got an angle like that. And we've got a nice, sine curve there in the bottom of the guitar. So a fairly traditional headstock shape is that. But let's make a feature of the end of the neck. Um, I can't believe I actually like that. That's the fastest I've ever done something I like on a headstock. Do we like the headstock? Broad approval. Fantastic. It doesn't look like a penis. That's, a, that's, a, that's an achievement. Okay. We've routed that. We've routed that. We've routed that. I don't think I need my router again. A lot of guitar building is, is using a router or a CNC machine. Who here doesn't believe that CNCs are real woodwork? Nobody's touching that one. <laughs> Time out! One of my first videos on YouTube must be more than a decade ago now. I was like, we don't like CNC machines. We don't, da 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 da. Honestly, most of that was because I couldn't afford one. <laughs> and, uh, and I also never thought that I'd be able to justify making more than one a month or so. Um, but, I mean, this kit that I'm working from is only possible because we've got the CNC machines that do a lot of the routing. But, personally, 
I love doing it this way when I'm building something for myself. As a company though, as a business, a CNC machine is absolutely essential. This here is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, ooh, a brand new machine. <laughs> One of my favorite machines of all time. The first machine tool that I ever bought was a spindle sander. And that one cost orders of magnitude more than this did because there was nothing on the market for the hobbyist. But I use these all the time. Okay, I'm gonna thoroughly freehand this. It's organic, it's part of the design. It was a new machine. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Go to the utter precision of figuring out where the bridge goes. So we've got adjustment here and adjustment on the saddles themselves. And it needs to be in the center. Yeah, this is the one thing. If we don't if I don't get this right, the guitar will never play properly. All right, so the nominal scale length of this guitar is 647.8 millimeters. But uh, on the bass side, I want that to be at about 650. And that's nominal if I've got a set of 10s, for example. If somebody then goes for a set of 13s, then they'll want to push it backwards. So you need to have some adjustment built in. And that's pretty much where I'm at. So that's exactly where I need to drill. This was the last tool packed. And without this, I just wouldn't be able to build a guitar. Just to be absolutely sure, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. Now drilling straight without a pin of drill 
takes a bit of practice, but it's, it's actually not that hard. Uh, the most important thing is, if you're watching what you're doing, um, as the cut goes in, I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure, but I'm watching for the telltale sign as those two bits hit. And if they go even, then I know I'm going straight. And if not, I know what I can do to adjust it. So there we go. Who here uses masking tape as a death stop? Okay, you're naughty, don't do it. Um, the, the shavings will push it out the way and it's not as precise. I always draw on the side of the drill bit. I mean, there's something to be said for being naughty every now and then as well. <laughs> and that'll do nicely. And then double check. So that's now my depth. And I'm about a millimeter deeper than I need to be. It's perfect. Who needs a ruler when you've got an Allen key, eh? Okay, so this is the ground wire. Without this, you're gonna hit, pick up the sort of uh, 50 cycle or 60 cycle hum. And uh, I am gonna drill from the bridge which is essentially connecting the strings to the ground into this cavity. And while we're drilling holes, we might as well carry on. Cool cap. We're coming up on two hours. All right, let's do a little bit of carving. It's part of the design, so yeah, why not? All right, so I can feel myself starting to completely lose concentration. This is gonna be fun. One of my favorite tools of all time. This is still being used on a regular basis, and it was made between 1780 and 1802. If I knew that I was going to design the guitar this way, I would have had a template and ran a router along in there. I, I like not having a plan going in. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. I was following the design rather than what the wood wants me to do. If you're cutting across the grain, it's much easier. I might get some tear out there, but I can fix that later.
Now with a good carver's manager, you've actually got a hell of a lot more control over what the gouge is doing as you carve. If you're forcing it by hand through, you, you don't know where it's gonna stop. We have loads of these over at the Crimson Stone. This workbench is not designed to be a workbench. That's an interesting shape. I like what's happening here. This is a beast. If you wanted to, I could use, I, I actually probably could have carved this shape with that. I'm going to start with an undercoat of black spirit-based stain and then go over it with a blue. That's going to be a very subtle, I hope, um, effect. You wipe by a little bit of the excess. So just wipe the excess off. That also blends it a little bit. This stuff dries really rapidly. 
so but uh, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna flood it on and then furiously rub it back and hope that I get it all okay and this should also accentuate the uh, the color just a little bit Okay, come on guys, I want oohs and ahs and gasps of delight. Okay, there we go. Rub off the excess. And that's me done. Now one of the other good things about this particular finish um, is if you're trying to go for a, a particularly blonde instrument, and you don't want to color the wood, if you want it to look like very, very white ash, uh, then this doesn't go in and it doesn't give that sort of golden sheen. <laughs> okay, we'd be going for two hours and 50 minutes. So I'm not gonna get it done in the three I was sort of aiming for, but I don't think anybody actually thought I would. Now I'm going from the center to the edge and over the edge. And that's me done, that's not the whole thing. But uh, yeah, any more I'm gonna have issues. So let that cure apply more and be done. At this stage I'm gonna put the body over there to just uh, do a thing for a bit. And uh, we are going to shape this headstock. I'm gonna hit it with the jigsaw and then probably the spindle sander. My dust extraction has zero ports that fit any of my tools. Um, I'm not sure who brought it, but uh, well, it didn't work. Okay, this will be quick and dusty. Cool. Honestly, 90% of the work has been done. I'm gonna go with some blonde shellac. It's another quick and easy finish. We'll make everything look a little bit golden and cures rapidly. So we are just over three hours into this. And there we go, I mean, that's, a, that's an okay finish if you're in a rush. Right, control layout. <laughs> Do need to locate where the controls are going. Uh, that's relatively delicate and it's gonna be drilled through. So at headquarters, they put together a wiring loom for me. All right. Good name, isn't it? Okay, so that actually kind of works. I'm going to put the switch somewhere else. So at this point, we're going to have the volume, the tone, and then a switch down there.
Good. And this is where I find that it's in the wrong place. So what we're gonna do is get this instrument strung up and then this evening in the hotel I'm gonna finish the wiring because uh, at this stage there's, nobody needs to see another man's solder. There's, there's just no point. Okay, that went really smoothly, honest. All right, so they're the same spacing, nothing to worry about there. There we go. That's what we're after. Okay, so the base of this isn't even. We've got that, we've got that. Should be okay. And I think I drilled deep enough. So we'll be going for three hours, 45 minutes now. Yes, yeah, so if this is the first time you've ever seen me do anything, go and uh, look at my stand and you'll see what guitars are supposed to look like. <laughs> Leather man, everybody. Okay. And we're actually fairly close to a guitar that looks like a guitar. So at this stage what we're doing is we're putting it together to a point it looks finished. So my issue is the brake angle is going to be wrong. I need to wedge the brake angle up. Yeah. Okay, that is what I'm after. A little bit of shellac. Ooh. I hadn't covered the whole, uh, the whole thing. All right, let's put the tuners in. Yes, I should have done this before I put the tuners on. That'll do. Now, I found the nut. There it is.
Dan komt hij naar de sleep. I'm gonna get that tattooed. <laughs> Purposes, we have a guitar. <sighs> Thank you very much. Uh, there you go, pass it around. I'm just gonna sink to the floor here and have a little cry. Smile. <laughs> That's a nice tripod. No, 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 I'm watching you. <laughs> there we go. That'll do. I have just spent the better part of a day at Maker Central with Triton building this guitar. Oh, sorry. You don't want me to serenade you? <laughs> Guys, this is the Maker's Guitar. Ben, ben with Crimson Guitar made this live today. We are all gonna sign it. An amazing. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, now I'll actually serenade. This is the Maker's Guitar that Ben from Crimson Guitars made yesterday on the Triton stand. Right, let's get signed. This Maker's Guitar was made let's right go. here. Uh, let's go around it. A bunch of us are gonna sign it. And you saw that. Okay, I have something else. 